Hey guys, I have some, a couple farmhouse DIYs. We're going to use mostly Dollar Tree and then a couple recycled cans uh, for some farmhouse decor for the new year. I'm like super excited to share it with you. So I'm Whitney with the Crafty Flots and Whatnots and thank you guys for joining me today. So for our first two here, we're going to start out with some recycled cans. First, we're going to, you know, you have to have can shaped cranberry sauce for the holidays. That's just how it is. Or cran sauce, not sauce. It's can shaped cranberry. <laughs> and some black olives. So these are just the cans I'm using. And then also uh, we're going to use the 11 foot. I don't know if it matters because every time you go to Dollar Tree, you're going to get a different length. So we've got the 11 foot um, cotton nautical rope and then the nine and a half foot regular nautical rope from Dollar Tree. And we're going to start by just taking the labels off. Now we don't have to prep these cans that much because we're going to cover them with the rope and the goodies and you won't see the cans so we don't really have to clean them too much i mean of course clean them off the inside otherwise you know depending on what you were storing in said can your diy will smell that way <laughs> but yeah black olive can was a little bit bigger than the cranberry can i think at the end okay we're just going to use hot glue and what here real quick i'm just testing to see will this fit with one strand of rope it did fairly well both of them only took the one strand strand of rope to cover the actual can. So instead of just wrapping it like you saw me do right there just to test it out, I decided I'm gonna make a much tighter wrap. So on this cotton, the cotton nautical rope, if you guys noticed it, the cotton from Dollar Tree is much more stretchier. It's It has a lot more give to it. So on this one, I was able to twist it more and pull on it more. And I think I got a little bit more length out of it, but I didn't want to load too much glue up, but I ended up with this one because of how stretchy it was. I ended up putting a, a decent amount around. So I'm just layering the glue um, on the can and the, the broke below, and I'm just kind of pulling it up. And then you'll see here, I kind of was like, it's kind of cheating a little bit, but just kind of pushing it down, but pulling it. So I'm putting I'm keeping a lot of tension on that rope with my one hand, and then I'll hold it with my thumb when I'm gluing. That's just to keep the tension on it. Now I'm going to say, I thought at first I didn't like these when I finished them. I like them. They turned out great. It wasn't how I planned it and it wasn't how I saw it in my head, but I think if you use a bigger can, it might look better, especially like one of the bigger coffee cans, like a Folgers big, big can, if you can even still find those anymore or just a larger can than these normal size cans. But I still think these guys turned out great. These girls look great on countertop, tabletop, if you can fit them in a tiered tray. So I still like them, but you guys tell me what you think at the end here. Now I, with this cotton one, there was a lot of raveling. There was a lot of issues. I couldn't figure out what I wanted to do with the handles. So I, I was opening my next one to see if I wanted to do handles, but it just looked a little too chunky. So I took this knot, the regular nautical rope. I had an extra piece in my stash with my, with my couples, my couple bundles there. And I made the handles for this one out of the regular nautical rope. I like the trans, the, 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 the not transition. What is it? The contrast of colors. I like the contrast of colors. So I'm literally just uh, gluing a U shape on the side to make handles. Now we're going to do that on each side. I did not measure. Uh, well, here, here's me measuring to make sure it's the same length, thinking that that's going to work. <laughs> the handles are not even on both of them. And you don't notice it at the end because we fill it with some goodies. But if you plan to use these as more functional pieces than what I did, I use them and I put some greenery in them. You guys saw the thumbnail in the pictures. I put greenery in them to make them, um, you know, little arrangement holders, but you could put anything. You could put your paintbrushes in here. You could put markers, Sharpies, current, uh, colored pencils. You could, you could put, um, maybe a liner in it, maybe even some food. You could put lots of things in these, but do you see how uneven those handles are? I think it's cute. <laughs> I like that it's just a little off. Also, don't forget to use, uh, I, you know, to take the, the, take the fuzzies off. I used uh, a candle lighter just to burn those off there. Now for this one, this is my next can. I decided to start at the top. I felt that 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 cotton one wasn't looking too hot because I started at the bottom and then the rough edge or the unfinished edge was towards the top. So for this one, I started at the top of the can, but I'm holding it upside down as you can see. I also had a lot less patience at this point. So this nautical rope is much thicker as far as, it's more dense than the cotton one. So I think I could get away with just gluing the one part. Now you see here, it didn't really cover most of it with one strand. So I, apparently I lied to you about two minutes ago, my bad. <laughs> so I used just a little bit, but again, this is nine and a half foot. Uh, so these are smaller bundles than the cotton one, but also remember the cotton one, I can pull and stretch it. So I was able to get more surface coverage out of the cotton one. This one's not so stretchy. 
So for there, I just kind of do a diagonal cut and then I glue the, the, I glue it down. And then here I'm burning off all the fuzzies again. And now we're gonna do the same thing. Now for this one on the handles, I'm gonna keep them the same nautical rope, but I tied a little knot at the end. And then I'm just gluing the back of that knot to the base of the can. And then I'm doing the same technique of just looping it around, trying to guess how much more I need to make another knot. And I just felt like it was kind of very, um, I would say nautical, but that's because the word nautical is in my head because it's nautical rope. <laughs> but I don't, I don't know. I like it. It's like, you know, you, you pulleys and ties and tie downs and those types of things. And I think it gives it that little extra something. It's not just a can wrapped in rope. It, it, it gives you something to, to look at, something to grab your eye. And so I made the two handles the same way. So I tied in a knot on either end and then glued the back of the knot to the can and then left the little loopy handle as, as it would lay. Now, of course, you're gonna have little imperfections and that's probably where the beauty comes from. But once again, if you'll see here, my handles are not even in the least. <laughs> and make sure you burn off more fuzzies if you want to. If you wanna leave that, that fuzzy look, then go for it. Now, I wasn't 100% happy with this cotton one. So what I did was I took the nautical rope and I made these little knots out of it. I just tied knots into the rope and then cut them off so that they had shorter pieces. And I added them around the can in various completely random space spaces. I just made probably think five, four or four or five. No, it's definitely five, five little knots. Maybe let's see one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, I added five to it because there were some spots that I felt that it just didn't look good. Now, as I'm watching this playback while I'm doing my recording here, my voice recording, I think it looks great. While I was making it, I was getting discouraged. So it was probably one of those instances where I probably should have just gotten up, took a break, went and had some tea or sit down and watch a short TV show or something. Just take, I should have walked away because I was getting very, um, you know, flustered in my own head over this one little rope project because you could see raw edges. And I really just am not a fan of the cotton rope from Dollar Tree. It, it, it shades, sheds too much, but I felt when I added these little knots that that kind of, it, it took it up a notch, made it look a little bit cuter. And even then now I'm looking at it, it looks so cute. And the, the parts that I'm upset about, or not upset, but the parts that I'm worried about showing, they don't show once we're done. So if you were going to point, uh, you know, use this for storage for some, some, some other item, then you might, you might see some of these, but I decided to make arrangements. So I just took some extra random uh, styrofoam that I have in my little extra pieces box and I glued those down into the can and I'm going to put some regular regular old Spanish moss. I get this at Dollar, not sorry, not Dollar Tree. I get it at Hobby Lobby. You can obviously get Spanish moss at Dollar Tree. And then for now, we're going to take a mixture of these Walmart picks. So I've got a leaf pick and then I also have a boxwood pick. Those you pretty much can get year round at Walmart should you want to duplicate this exactly. Now these were part of a bigger bundle of greenery that I got at Walmart a, a while back. It was, an, you know, they're just extras. Every, we, all, we all have weird little, you know, random things in our stashes. So I just grabbed the greenery that I could and I only want to do is mix the different colors and textures together to make this more of a neutral piece because again, we're still transitioning into winter. And now this guy can carry us into spring and summer. I mean, it, it depends on if you want to add things to it. You could stick some hearts, little heart picks in it. Anything decorative kind of pick will apply to whatever season you can put uh, hearts in it for Valentine's day, those little egg picks for Easter or bunnies. 4th of July, you could put stars in it. So this is something you could leave out in your home or on your decor, or in your tiered tray, wherever you choose. And it will carry you through most of the seasons. I mean, I would even leave it out for Christmas and just put some, you know, some ornaments sticking out of it or some, some snowflakes. It, it, for me, I think it's very universal, but I really like how it turned out. I really like how they turned out because now you don't, you're not really focusing on some of the things that I think were imperfections in, in them. Now, Again, I don't see anything here that was really detrimental to it. So I, again, I, there's a little bit of extra hot glue here and there. I'm looking at, you know, now it's time to critique and pick it apart. <laughs> Here's, I'm going to zoom in on it, you know, ready for its close up. And now the only thing here on this one is you can see right there, there's some cans showing on the edge, but that's also technically what I would call the back of the piece because that's where I ended the rope. So you can see a little bit of the can at the top of this uh, natural, the regular colored uh, nautical rope, but I like how they are. They're, and again, you're recycling a tin can. You can't be, you can't be too upset with that. And I think they look really good for, you know, recycled items. And of course, greenery for the new year. Now, our second DIY. This one I was so happy with. These are the four four by four frames I got at Dollar Tree. 
I have had these in my stash for a while, guys. I'm not gonna, you know, I'm not gonna try to say, hey, I bought them yesterday, but I have been at Dollar Tree recently, many times actually, before and after Christmas, before this video. Uh, and actually I was just there yesterday before this voice recording. They have these frames in two of my stores that are near my home. So these are something I've seen for a while. So I took them all apart. I took the backings out. I took all the little uh, metal pegs out that hold them in. And what we're going to do is we're going to fill these in with um, craft sticks. Now here's my plethora. Now these this bag here, was something I've had in my stash for a while. I bought it at Walmart, it says $3.99. Now this says Jumbo Craft Sticks, right? This I got recently for $3.97. This says Super Giant Craft Sticks. And now these two, one is from Walmart, I believe. The other is from Lowe's or Home Depot. They just say paint, quart paint sticks. These are all the same size. If I took them out and I measured them, they are all the same size. So you can get mul multiple opportunities to purchase these. They are all the same type of stick. And I believe the, the little packages you see that aren't in bags, those last two from Home Depot and then in the paint section, those are, I think, a dollar. Whereas these other ones were like $3.99 or $3.97 almost for the, for the pack. You get 30 of them, so you get a little bit less. And these other bags, I believe, had 45 in it. But in any event, what we're going to do is we're going to take these. These are the widest ones. And what worked out was I only need four, as you can see here. So when I cut them down and I measured it on my mat there, you saw, oops, sorry, excuse me. You saw like a second ago, they're basically four inches. So the frame is true. The finally something that measures correctly from Dollar Tree, it's a four by four frame and they're not lying. It's four inches long. Each stick had to be four inches long. So I'm just kind of taking some shears and I'm, I'm cutting these to make them even just to take a peek. Is that what I want? Yep, it's exactly what I'm looking for. So we're gonna fill each one of these frames with four little planks. So we're gonna make it look like shiplappy, very planky. Now. I need 16 of them, right? It was four times four. <laughs> now it's time to do your math skills, Whitney. Don't let everyone know that you actually use your fingers. Now, I don't have 16 toes or fingers, so it's okay. Now, I may have used my phone, but regardless, I had to get the rest of these sticks done and I didn't want to cut them individually, so I got my miter box out. Now you can get a miter box online and you uh, on YouTube, <laughs> on Amazon. I have an Amazon shop link below, which there's some things coming up you're gonna see. But you can get these miter boxes at pretty much any home improvement store. You can get them at Walmart, you can get them on Amazon. So I just glued, uh, not glued, I um, taped them together with some masking tape. And this first edge is the edge that I wanted to get the curve off of. And now for this one, I need to make them four inches wide. So I'm going to measure again on my mat. And then I'm going to bring another one of the pieces I'd already cut and just make sure that I do it. But I'm going to put these face down and then use my miter box again. I probably at some point, guys, will venture into some power tools. Now, I'm trying not to do things that not everybody can just grab and do because I like fast crafts or not necessarily fast. I just like convenient crafts. I don't want to have to get a Cricut out. I don't want to have to do things that cost monthly subscription fees. I don't want to have to go out to the garage and, and plug in a power tool. But some of these things would make life a lot easier because the miter box is easy and convenient, but it is sort of just a little tedious but if you've ever used one let me know how you guys feel about it but I think there are some some other options that might be easier but it would require probably a power tool so we'll see what happens but moving on from that little jibber jabber session I'm going to take all of our little sticks here as you can see I have 16 of them I'm going to take my antique waverly wax and a baby wipe and I'm going to give them all one coat I only did the one side because the backs aren't going to show by the time we're done and so that was my first coat. And here I'm darkening them up because we are going to cover most of it in uh, chalk paint, white chalk paint. And so what I did was just darken them a little bit up. And then of course the hair dryer there to blow, the, to blow dry them, blew them all across the table. That was great fun. <laughs> so now that they're dry, we are going to take some masking tape. I'm going to put it sticky side up and I'm going to stick all of my little sticks to this because we don't want them to move around because we're, we're now going to paint them with the white chalk paint. And I want to get a decent enough coverage that it looks very uh, distressed, very farmhouse, but I don't want the sticks to go everywhere and I don't want to have to hold them all down. So this right here is the best way also to paint wooden letters if you need to paint letters. So this is a cottage white uh, home home decor, folk art, home decor, chalk paint. And I'm taking a chip brush and I'm just taking the, it's actually congealed. This, this is, I've had this, this big humongous tub of chalk paint for a while. So the top of that lid's got some very thick loopy paint on it and I'm using that and I am dry brushing, but I'm doing very, very heavy handed. And then you'll see me go through the middle here and just put more of a heavier coat in the middle because we're gonna apply some letters to this so that the frames spell out home. So I wanted more coverage in the middle now, I had extra paint and I felt like 
these things might kind of get lost in the color of the frame. So I just added white chalk paint to the, the edges, you know, just extra that was on my brush. That didn't go and get more paint, just added a little bit of extra thinking that, you know, this will be enough contrast. Now, all of our little four inch uh, craft sticks or court, court paint sticks, whatever you want to use, they are all dry. And so look how cute they are. It's all cute little individual ship laps, just little pieces. And then here's all of our frames with a little bit of dry brushing on it. We're going to put four of each of these inside the frame. Now there's some of them here you'll see, if you kind of tell, one of them had been almost chipped or split on one side so it wasn't even. I just tucked that towards the side of the frame where you have a lip, normally where the glass would sit, and it hides it. So there is the possibility that you'll see a lot of these are different edges, different sizes. And here, if you get some glue out, just get a little tool of some sort and you can literally scratch the glue off and it, it doesn't show. So if that's if you're, you use a little bit too much and it squishes out. But that is exactly what I was looking for. It's very shiplap, very, I love it. It's just very country, very, very farmhouse. I keep saying the same things on every video, but these are the things that make me happy. It's just like, you know, if you have a specific style or a specific preference and it makes you feel this good, then stick with it. You know, that's where your heart lies and just do it because I love this stuff. Now I'm just, again, making sure all of these little girls stick together right and they fit together and a couple of them that they don't you can always use a sanding block or you know finger sander to kind of get the edges down and on a couple of them i did that so here we got all four now we're going to use an iod stamp set i have a coupon code from milton daughter milton's daughter.com it is linked in my description box if you want to link to that website and also it is uh, 10 percent off all iod products um, at miltonsdaughter.com. So if you need to, now I know IOD products are a little expensive, so we'll talk more about that once we're done. I want to show you a couple other options. Now I got this little group of stickers from Amazon. These are farmhouse looking stickers. It's a eight sheet letter, it says decals, capital letter stickers, black alphabet, scrapbook letters, vinyl scrapbook. They are listed in my Amazon shop. They are very, uh, what do you call that? Ray Dunn inspired. I love them. And then here is a set of, here's the actual set. It's a 14 piece set of stencils I got from Amazon, also linked in my shop below. They are very inexpensive. It's $12 for the full set. Those other stickers were about $9 for the full set and you get eight sheets of those stickers. Now this one is $12, but look at how perfect this particular stencil from that 14 piece set. You could stencil these letters on so you don't actually have to have these, the stamp set that I have, the IOD stamps. I know a lot of you had said that you know, IOD is very expensive. Now it is worth the investment in my opinion. This is my first time using this set and I did buy it last year, but at this point, at this moment right now, it is still available. So I had to take my little sanding block and um, just kind of rough up it. That's, like, that's what you have to do the first time you use IOD stamps. And here I was gonna use a little acrylic um, piece I use on my scrapbooking and it didn't fit because the frame is too big. So instead, I didn't have anything else. I took the backing sheet that came with the stamp set and I'm going to use it as my own little backer. So I'm putting one of the stamps I'm gonna use on it and I get at least a good idea of how wide I need it. And I'm just gonna cut it in half. I don't wanna cut too many small pieces out but I want enough for me to hold on and maybe in the future because this is a letter set, spell out some words and I can then use it that way. Now, a quick tip, I've seen Sammy from Unicorn Dust Designs. She has used the uh, cutting mats from Dollar Tree and cut those up. I will probably grab a couple of those to cut them in smaller pieces. And those work really well for these stamp sets. I'm gonna use some archival ink. This is also linked in my Amazon shop. I do not have any IOD ink. I did not purchase any because I have lots of ink pads. And this is what we're going with. We just kind of tap it on there and then put it down. I pressed around with my finger and it doesn't it, it doesn't smear. Now don't use a brayer because I did that back in fall with one of my pumpkin sets and it kind of smears it, but it still turned out great because it was a pumpkin. <laughs> I couldn't say no, it's a punky. So here I was also was like, well, I want to do something different for the O and home. But you'll see, obviously, from the pictures of how we did that, that was a little surprise. I forgot that I'd purchased something. It was a little happy accident. And now for the M, and again, make sure all of your little uh, popsicle sticks or your, your craft sticks are facing the same way. I chose to make this a vertical sign, but I wanted the craft sticks to go horizontally. And remember, we put paint down the center of them so that more of the letter, when once I am stamping, was going to, excuse me, so that, that, that would show up. So we're just going to do all four letters. We're going to spell out the, the, the word home. And I think this one also is another project that can be universal. You can add different little extras around the picture frame. And I'll, I'll tell you guys exactly more when I show you our, our end pieces. So now that we have home spelled out, everything looks good. I'm going to use this webbing. This is a webbing. It's a big, massive roll of webbing I got from craftoutlet.com. 
couple years back. I mean, look how tiny that is. <laughs> and it is a gorgeous, gorgeous webbing. I love it. Um, now it was not cheap and shipping is not cheap, but it is what it is. There's certain investments that you make. Now you could do this vertical or horizontal. I really like that as well. I wanted a horizontal stand-up sign, uh, but you could see how cute that would be. We just put like a little beaded hanger above the H and you've got a cute little hanging longer sign that'd look great on a pantry door or next to a, you know, entry hall, something like that anywhere, or even in a bathroom or on a door. It just, just a super cute. So I am gluing the webbing to the back of these frames and I'm using this masking tape as a guide. And then later I use my actual cutting mat because it's amazing how I have this cutting mat here with all these measurements on it. Why don't I use it, Whitney? <laughs> So I'm just trying to, to make things even because this is going to stand up on its own and you'll see me stand it up periodically. And of course, apply enough glues to get it to stick down to the backings of all the craft sticks and then also the back of the frame. And then also I wanted to, I had the idea that I wanted to make sure this folds up for storage. So you'll see me do a couple different folds to make sure I have enough of a clearance in it. Um, the pencil marks were so that I could fate, you know, line them up while it was facing down. It would have been nice to put glue on the frame, but my issue would have been, I'm going to put glue on the frame where it might be too far. And then you've got glue sticking on it. It was just, I like the backing of things to look nice and neat. I don't like globbing things on or just saying, oh, the back and then not painting and leaving unfinished. So I wanted to make sure that the back is equally as nice, just in case for some reason, if you put this out, it might be seen. It's one of those things. And then of course I know it's there. So for my own personal preference, I try to make it all neat and tidy from every angle. If that is not important to you, then I love you. And uh, you do you and we will continue to do as we want. Like a lot of times I don't specifically look for it, but if I catch it and I know it's there because I made it, then that's my own. That's my own little crafty demon. <laughs> I have to deal with that. Like, I know there's a raw edge back there. I know that you can see the Dollar Tree sign. I know there's glitter on it. <laughs> so here, after I got it all glued down, I'm making sure it stands up correctly. And then here, I'm making sure it folds up correctly. Now we're gonna add something cute to the little O here. And um, I got these cute little cowbells from Amazon. Look how cute they are. There were so many people in there. And then of course, there's my my craft or my junk bucket. Of, this is the junk bucket of ribbon. I have, I have graduated to two junk buckets now, guys. I'm pretty sure at some point it's gonna be a, a junk room or a junk car just full of stuff but this is that farmhouse ribbon from dollar tree that i absolutely love and i have not been able to find for many 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 moons i need to have more of this in my life so i've tried to find some extras uh, you know so something else on Amazon, but I only have like two more rolls of this farmhouse ribbon, but I love it. So I took one of a uh, little extra piece I had in my stash and I just kind of looped it through the bell, through the bell and I'm gluing it to the top of the O and we're going to make a finger bow. Now I've taken this finger bow out. I have a link in my description of a separate video I've done. That's very informative. If you want to take a peek at it, I love the way these look, but it took me a lot of practice and time. And I also have in that link other videos I watched that helped me when I was practicing making them. But I also, I, I slow it down so that you can see in real time how I do them. And that way we don't have to do that here in this video because it's just, it's gonna get long enough. There's so much to explain. So you'll see me in some of my videos, I will untie them. I untie them a couple times sometimes, but um, it just takes enough, it just takes enough of the, you know, primping and fussing and pulling and, and squishing just to get that right little spot. And you'll know, you'll know when you get there because it makes you happy. It gives you that warm little squishy feeling in your heart, in your little farmhouse heart. <laughs> and then also just to keep the ribbon from fraying, of course, I put a little bit of a lighter on the edge of it, but I think this is great. Now you can still see the O just a little bit, but I had originally not even planned on putting an O on there. Now, I felt that the frames and the craft stick little plank design behind kind of got lost in each other. So uh, with the black in the ribbon and the black of the letters we stamped, I wanted to add some more contrast to the frame. So I took some black chalk paint. This is Waverly chalk paint and ink. I just have it in its own little, you know, sauce cup. You have to make sure you don't accidentally eat it. But anyways, I have it in its own little cup here and I'm taking a stencil brush. I don't really have a reason why I grabbed the stencil brush because I don't really pay attention to brushes that often. Uh, a chippy brush I think would have been too big. I think maybe that's why I grabbed this one because it's smaller and I'm putting um, just a, I would say at first it was a light dry brushing, but you'll see when we're done that this, this these frames have been distressed and, and very, uh, very farmhouseified. If you see here how much I have, I've added around the edges. And then of course I wanted to get some of the insides 
on the edges of those frames and then also I put a little bit on the cowbell itself just to get that to, to kind of add in and then I felt that it was a little bit not it just wasn't warm enough it wasn't matching the webbing ribbon that we put on the back so I got my antique wax back out and I just added a little bit here and there in the corners and I mean it's just a very sloppy um, blending is really all I did I just kind of had no rhyme or reason you'll see here me just dab and then apply it to the frame dab and then a couple times use, use my finger and I think I think it turned out great I'm very happy with it at first I was a little like well maybe I shouldn't have did the black paint oh no but you guys tell me do you like before the paint after the paint I love how this turned out I couldn't be happier and I just you know one of those things it's like a lot of times these things turn out better than you expect them to now my first set not sure if I like them too much but here this set I like a lot. Oh, and here we're still we still have it uh, being able to be folded, and then the O is on top, so our little cowbell doesn't get squished. But look how great it is! Now those beads that you see there, that is a garland I got at Walmart's Christmas was discounted. I, I went to I went to Walmart the day before Christmas. Bad idea, guys. Really bad idea. <laughs> but all their Christmas was discounted, so that's a garland. Now you're probably going to see me rip that apart and use that another DIYs or to make some tassels or some other cute little goodies here and there, but that's just a garland I took off of the, um, off of the, the, the hanger and just used here. And then I love how this sits up on the table. It's a perfect little longer piece. You can put it on the back of like a buffet or a, a sofa table, something that has, you know, a longer rectangle of space. Uh, you could put it at the top of something, even on a mantle of a, a fireplace mantle. Just it, it's the way it sets. I love it. You guys tell me what you think. This made me so happy. All right. So here's the uh, end result of all of our DIYs together. I kind of staged them together in my garage for the studio lights. And there's that. Look at that finger bow. That's a double tied bow. Just because I messed it up the first time. But I think everything turned out great. It's my first time using those IOD stamps and I love them. So I have an opportunity now to reuse them and spell out many, 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 many words. <laughs> like farmhouse. You can see farmhouse on everything. Now see, there's my little co coffee can that was kind of giving me some, some issues, but I think they turned out great. Please ignore the fact that you can see the tin can. Again, Whitney, turn that around. That is the back. That's the back. So don't even listen to my own advice. You think I would have saw that when I was recording this, but you guys tell me what you think. I love the way these turned out and they make me really happy. And I was looking forward to sharing them with you guys. So that's about it. Um, just want to say thank you to everybody multiple times over. You guys don't know what you do for me. You make me so happy and I can't thank you enough in words. I have a coffee page and I want to thank every single person who has donated for me. If you've learned anything or you find my videos informative or educational or whatever you get from them, even if it's just happiness, uh, buy me a coffee helps, helps contribute to my channel, keeps me going. And I love every single one of you. I also love you if you can't. So don't think that you have to. You just being here is more than enough. Just say hi in the comments. YouTube knows that you're there and thinks that you like me, which is the truth. So it doesn't matter. <laughs> So with that said, guys, thank you so much for everything. Once again, I love you more than I can express in words. Many, many hugs, happy crafting, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye for now.